yet another wonderful session with us by Jews. I'm Aishwarya and today we are going to be learning about what are microorganisms? I'm sure all of you would have heard of this term microorganisms and we will understand what are they, where we find them, right? And what are the different types that exist? If you are watching this video for the first time in this channel, Please make sure that you like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Now of course, before I jump into telling you what are microorganisms, I am sure you would have heard of the word organisms, right? And most often we talk about living organisms. So here mainly when we talk about living organisms in any given situation. And here, as you can see, we have a scenario of a forest. So when we talk about the living organisms that we find in the forest, what are all the living organisms that you will tell me about? Well, I'm sure you will tell me that, man, there are such beautiful plants here, right? We have small trees, we have some big trees, we have some small shrubs here and various varieties, right? That is important. We see various varieties of the same. Yes. Then what other kind of living organisms would we find in a given scenario like this? Well, you will tell me that, ma'am, there might even be some animals, right? And you can tell me any kind of animals. There could be some squirrels here. There could be some insects, right? There could be some birds flying around. All of these are some living organisms that you will be telling me about. And that's most often that we think about plants and animals. But the thing is, there are some more organisms here. It's just that... When we have a look at it at one go, we will not be able to see them. But if we zoom closely and we magnify it, whether it's in the air or even in the soil, we will find some organisms. And these organisms are so tiny that they are not visible to the naked eye. And we call them as microorganisms. So what are these microorganisms? Or another way that we refer to them is as microbes. Now, don't get confused with microorganisms and microbes. More or less, they are the same thing. So, how do we define microorganisms? Now, very simply put, microorganisms are tiny organisms that is not visible, right? That are not visible to the naked eyes. Which means that one go, if you have a look at it, you will not be able to spot it. Rather, you need to zoom and magnify and look closely, which is why most often we also call them as microscopic organisms. Very important word. Now, you must be wondering, right, why are we calling them as microscopic organisms? The reason being that the instrument that we use to observe them in close detail is called as a microscope. And the microscope will help you magnify and zoom and look closely into it so that you can actually observe these organisms. Now, I'm sure you must be wondering, right, ma'am, how does a microscope look like? And how would it look like under the microscope? Let's have a look here. So we have Alex here who's viewing something using this instrument. And this instrument right here is a microscope. And what happens is that this is how we use or this is where we keep our eyes. And when we look closely, we will be able to see it. And this is where we will keep our sample. Yes. So now let's see what Alex is viewing under the microscope. Well, can you see that? All of these are microscopic organisms that look odd. This is how they would look like under a microscope. Then again, there are various kinds of microscope, but... Here, what we need to mainly understand is that microscope helps us look at these microorganisms, right? Now, the next thing I'm sure all of you must be thinking, right? Ma'am, where do we find them? Where are these microorganisms? Well, the answer is microorganisms are everywhere, which means that it's there in the air, it's there in the soil, it's there in the water. As a matter of fact, they are even there on the surface of our hands and our skin. Well, you see, if you take a closer look, right, you will understand that there are various microbes that settle on the surface of our skin. 
which is why most often you know you would have heard your parents tell you right wash your hands thoroughly before you eat food or you know cleanse your body regularly so that you get rid of all these microorganisms that are settling on the surface but apart from this we also see that microorganisms are found in some diverse environments which means that environments where there is extreme temperature or i would also put it as extreme conditions right so here you see in the desert snowy mountains hot springs we would find these microbes of course soil here is there but in the soil also we find that there are large microbes a large number of microorganisms which are present now of course constantly i have been referring to as microorganisms right or i have been saying microbes yes but is it that there's only one kind of microorganisms or everything looks the same or they're all of the same kind right well it's almost like how i say that there are many animals right we know that animals is a very broad way of referring to them because we know that in the animals also we have various kinds we have you know animals like giraffes and lions we have insects earthworms they're all considered to be animals we have fishes and they're all diverse and different from one another similarly we see that microbes or microorganisms is a very broad umbrella term by which we refer to them in that also there are various kinds of microorganisms so broadly if you see we can classify right or you can say that we can group these microorganisms into four large categories so we have bacteria which are very simple and primitive that means they are very you know primitive organisms then we have protozoans then we have fungi and we have algae right now the thing with fungi here is that we see that fungi are you know some of them are microscopic which means some of them we cannot see with our naked eye while some are macroscopic right so if you take the mushroom these are organisms right or these are you know organisms that we can see with the naked eye so this is one thing about fungi that you need to understand because this is a place where things can get slightly tricky now here are some examples that i will tell you about these four categories that we just saw right so here as you can see first up we have fungi and i will give you some examples of fungi so we have yeast which is an example and we also see that bread mold or rhizopus is an example of fungi now next up if i have to give you some examples of protozoans right or protozoa yes i'm going to just write protozoans here we have amoeba which is an example and then we also have paramecium yes so these are some examples now next up when we talk about bacteria right bacteria is a very large group but if i have to give you just two examples of course we have rhizobium and then we can also write lactobacillus which is an example here and lastly we have algae yes now in algae it's again a very broad group but i'll give you two examples we have spirogyra and then we have chlamydomona so i'm just going to write that in black outside so that you can see more clearly yes so here we have chlamydomona so these are some examples that you can make a note of so this was all about the different groups of microbes that are present now i'll give you another situation and this is a very important thing that we need to understand sometimes you know that there are instances where we may not keep well and we may suffer from a sore throat right so here as you can see she is suffering from sore throat and her throat really hurts now on closer examination we found out that the reason behind this was because she was she was you know attacked or invaded right i would use this word she was invaded by microbes yes and that is why she is not keeping well and most often when we talk about microorganisms we relate to the fact that sometimes they can be harmful to our body but what we don't realize is that sometime or the other they are beneficial so have you ever tasted curd i'm sure most of you out there like eating curd and we are able to get this curd because of microorganisms that's something interesting to think about right microorganisms being a large community and a large group of organisms are not only harmful but actually they are beneficial 
and in this chapter microorganisms whether they are our friends or actually are they our foes we will learn and understand the balance of how they how some are beneficial and how some are harmful so with this we've had a quick introduction to microorganisms what kind of organisms they are where they are found and the different types so very quickly i have a homework question for you where in the comment section below i want you to tell me about the major group of microorganisms and we will definitely be discussing it very soon in the live sessions that will be following this now of course you know that there are various mini learning programs wherein you can pick a program that suits you the best and of course byju's classes has always got you covered and if you are new to our channel do join our telegram channel where you get regular session notes fun facts quizzes updates and so much more well you know that the 6 to 8 channel has always got you covered do of course like this video share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel you have some free trial classes that are there in the description box i hope now the introduction to microorganisms has become easy hoping to see you very soon again bye bye and have a nice day